Romans chapter 12 verses 9 to 10 Love must be sincere Hate what is evil Cling on to what is good Be devoted to one another in love Honor one another above yourselves Take the opportunity to wish all of our mothers a very happy 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 mother's day we at the point in Cedras pastoral region of the presbyterian church of trinidad and tobago recognize that this is the first time in the history of the, the church we are not in church for mother's day so this morning's Mother's Day service is brought to you as a team effort from the pastoral region involving the Sunday School of the Point Portin Presbyterian Church who of course breached no quarantine rules as the children were excited to bring for you their normal renditions in this virtual form of course they could not have done what they're accustomed to they had to improvise the tapings were done at their home by their parents joining me also again the Siratan family with music and song and our preacher for today lay pastor Ivan Paul of the point 14 Cedras pastoral region let us humbly bow together in prayer let us pray lord on this beautiful auspicious day as we celebrate mothers another unique experience we find in our hearts time for you children celebrating mothers knowing that you are the source of our mothers to you be glory honor and praise as we place all of it in your hands inspire us and motivate us to love each other above ourselves In jesus name we pray amen today's scripture comes from john chapter 2 verses 1 to 12 and the passage is entitled the wedding in kina Two days later, there was a wedding in the town of Cana, in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine had given out, Jesus' mother said to him, They are out of wine. You must not tell me what to do, Jesus replied. My time has not yet come. Jesus' mother then told the servants, Do whatever he tells you. The Jews have rules about ritual washing, and for this purpose, six stone water jars were there, each one large enough to hold between 20 and 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, Fill these jars with water. They filled them to the brim, and then he told them, Now draw some water out and take it to the man in charge of the feast. They took him the water which now had turned into wine, and he tasted it. He did not know where this wine had come from, but of course, the servants who had drawn out the water knew. So he called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone else serves the best wine first, and after the guests have drunk a lot, he serves the ordinary wine. But you have kept the best wine until now. Jesus performed this first miracle in Cana in Galilee. There he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. After this, Jesus and his mother, brothers and disciples went to Capernaum and stayed there a few days. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God for his own holy word. Here's some of the students of the Point Fortin Presbyterian Church Sunday School would like to greet all mothers everywhere. Enjoy our special presentation. 
Happy Mother's Day. M. Mother is magical and marvelous to me. Oh, she has outstanding beauty. T. Tremendous teacher in her own special way. Extraordinary angels sent from above. Are radiant, reliable, rich with love. Let us pray. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, and Lord, thy word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. As we pray, Lord, Lord, we ask the Holy Spirit to fall afresh upon us. Speak to us, O God. Give us air to listen. Hearts, O God, Lord, Father, to open to you. Upon this special Mother's Day, we look, O Lord, Father, towards you and ask for blessing upon our mothers. Speak now, O God, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessed be your name, God. Today, we take a look at Jesus' first miracle. It happened in Cana of Galilee. John, the writer of this gospel, he noted that there were two Canas, and so he wrote Cana in Galilee to point where this Cana was, because there was another Cana in Syria. And so Cana of Galilee. Jewish weddings were very elaborate celebrations and uh, it was wonderful because it was family, time for family, time to celebrate with joy, happiness. And in these uh, Jewish weddings, sometimes they went on for days, the celebrations. And because of these elaborate celebrations, sometimes other members of family would take charge to assist with refreshments and things like these. The data suggests that, you know, this was one of such days. And first century writing would have spoken to us and tell us that, you know, that Mary's family was responsible for the happenings on that day's celebration. Mary and her family were involved. Jesus was present with his disciples and something happened. Something that could have been a little bit embarrassing to her and her family. The drink ran out. The wine ran out. And so she turned to her son, called him. We have a problem. The wine has run out. Jesus in turn According to what was written in the gospel, what's translated in the gospel, it would have been noted that Jesus told her, Woman, what have that to do with me? Other translations and other uh, areas of these uh, translations, especially in the first century, some recognized Jesus' tone. It was not a boisterous tone, but it was a subtle, soft tone. And the translation of the word woman would have really meant the word lady. The Prince of Peace, the Son of God, the Mighty God, the King of Kings, at least his mother would have been a lady and not just a woman. And so, we understand that. And when it was written, that Jesus would have told her, what that have to do with me? Other translations would have brought clarity to it and said, you know, Jesus was actually saying, what do you want me to do? Mary, the mother of Jesus, displayed so much confidence in her son. She displayed that confidence by speaking to the servants and saying, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Now confidence goes with obedience. Not only that Mary displayed confidence in her son, but the son 
displayed obedience in the, the request of the mother. There were six stone jars in the front of the building, the place where the ceremony was kept. And at the entrance, those six stone jars contained water. The servants will use that water to wash the feet of the guests, the people that were coming, because it was very, very dusty. Dusty, and they need to have their feet washed. So Jesus told the servants, fill the jars with water. After they filled them with water, he told them again, now draw some and take it to the master of ceremonies. When he took it to the master of ceremony, he tasted it. And he exclaimed, wow, you left the best for last. Normally people would serve the best wine first and then the other types later on, but you left the best for last. You see, with Jesus, when we look at seven, it's a perfect number, but it was six jars. In other words, people would have said, well, six was an imperfect number. But with Jesus, the Son of God, he takes the imperfect and he makes it perfect. So as we look now at the confidence of mothers and the obedience of children, in today's society, we note, yes, that there are mothers who have a lot of responsibilities. Sometimes fathers are no longer around they are no longer around. And in Mary's case, Joseph was not alone. The Mary took on the role of both mother and father, and she did so wonderfully. She did so because she depended on God, knowing that her God was able. He's able, my friends. And so, as we take a look at today's society, we see that yes, mothers have a lot of responsibilities to look after children where father is not present. But some of the children, they are not obedient. They are doing a lot of things that is, you know, endemic to the functions of society. They are committing lots of crimes. And some of the mothers, they are saying, you know, well, these are good boys. They are good boys, even though they are getting in trouble with the police because they bring them stuff. And they feel, well, that is good enough for them. But we are reminded in the Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 6, that the wisdom tells us to train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. So the way we speak about here is the way that John recorded in chapter 14 and verse 6, when Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. So we take a look again at what happened at the marriage feast. When did it happen? It happened at a wedding. And this was a time of joy and celebration and happiness, yes, for all. And so the imperfect became perfect. When did it happen? It happened at the wedding, yes. But where did it happen? It happened in a home. And we remember the words of that beautiful hymn that we sing so many times. Happy the home when God is there. Because when God is there, our oh God is a God of love. And His love will fill every breast. Where one their wish and one their prayer and one their heavenly rest. Now why did it happen? It happened so that God will show the glory of the Son. And His glory to His Son. Yes. Glory to God. So as we look at the jars again, those jars held between 20 and 30 gallons of water. And if we add it up, 6 by 30 would be 180 gallons. Yes, we don't think that those people would have drank 180 gallons of wine. But what it demonstrates to us is that God's grace is super sufficient. God's grace is a super sufficient. So that day when Mother Mary was responsible to help and to show family responsibility, yes, God's a super sufficient grace manifested itself. And so we're saying today that mothers be more like Mary. 
Mary, who at the time, you know, when she was called and given that responsibility to bring God's Son into the world, she responded by saying, My soul magnifies the Lord. My soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, today. It's sad to see that some mothers are not taking uh, cognizance of that. Even though in the midst of the COVID pandemic, they are going about to, to fet, fet and to make merry against the advice of the Ministry of Health. And the consequences are very dire. We see that accident on Maracas Road, where a young mother lost her life. What is going to happen to our three children? Mothers, we're saying today, be more like Mary. Be like Mary, mothers, be like Mary, and say, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Have a blessed Mother's Day, all you mothers. Happy the home when God is here. Let God be in your home, mother. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father and Lord, we thank you, dear God, for your blessedness, for the blessedness of your Son and your Holy Spirit. And, O oh God, the grace, that, O oh Lord, the super-sufficient grace that you have given to us, your people, and especially to our mothers, oh dear God, that today they stand, O oh Lord, ready, willing, and able, dear Father, to exude their responsibilities and their dependency on you, knowing that you are able, and because you are able, Lord, you would respond being able. Bless, O oh Lord, we pray, all our families, our mothers especially at this time, and children, O oh God, so that they would look to you and see how Jesus was obedient, and we would be obedient to you. Hear us, O oh God, we pray as we pray for our country, our nation, O oh Lord, today, all our people, O oh Lord, in this time of the pandemic. Touch, O oh Lord, Father, lift us up, your Son, Jesus. He's the worthy Lamb of God who sits upon the throne, covers in the blood. You are Jehovah Jireh. Supply us, O oh God, when we need. Hear us, O oh Lord, today, as we worship and praise your name. Have mercy upon us, O oh God. Look down upon us with all your blessedness. We pray in the name of Jesus who has taught us to pray together as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
let us pray. As we culminate this experience of the virtual worship on this auspicious Mother's Day, O Lord, away from your house of prayer, we continue to pray for mothers across the world. Perhaps mothers who are crying because of not knowing where the next meal comes from. Perhaps mothers who are worried about their children, unable to see them because of quarantine rules and regulations. Perhaps mothers who are sick and not uh, well enough to be able to play with their children. Mothers who cry every night, worried about their families. We pray for all families, husbands, children, extended families. A lot is happening with much uncertainty. Be our shepherd, be our guide, be our inspiration. Dry the tears of those who cry. Extend the smiles of those who smile. And that smiles last a lifetime. Bless this world of yours as you seek to restore it to what you intended it to be. Continue to bless the essentials of our nation and world, the medical fraternity, the food industry, and the hardwares, the groceries. May our needs be met. May you supply us with all that we ever need. May homes everywhere find happiness, especially on this Mother's Day. As we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us the family prayer, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now the grace and blessing of God, the Father, the Son and Holy Spirit, rest, remain and abide with all of God's children this happy Mother's Day, homes everywhere, now and forevermore. Amen.
should never forget the wrong things you do, child, you're born to regret. Your mother's love should never forget the wrong things you do, child, you're born to regret. Many nights she lose her rest to nurse you from her breast. Many nights she woke up late to put you to rest. Many nights she grieved to see you grow from hand and see. And, and many nights she wanted to know what will you be. So use your conscience and sympathy. God say to worship she and then go to me. Your mother's love should never forget the wrong things you do, child, you're born to regret. Your mother's love should never You do child, you're bound to regret. You may be the one they call your majesty. You may have money in a large quantity. You may have a friend in a high society. Don't be too proud to know whatever you To comfort your soul But your mother is the master team of this world Your mother's love should never forget The wrong things you do, child, you're born to regret Your mother's love should never forget You do, child, you're born to regret. Never treat your mother bad, never make her sad. Make your mother happy and glad, she'll never wish you bad. Never treat your mother bad, never make her sad. Make your mother happy and glad she'll never wish you back. Never miss the water till the well runs dry. Just like your mother when she closes her eyes. Your mother's love should never forget the wrong thing we do. Tell me a story where there is no king or queen, a story that relates to me and you, a story that tells about the anguish of every heart, a story that is filled with the fragrance of the world, a story that does not talk about a celestial damsel or illusions or pretty angels in the heaven. But tell me a special story. Tell me the story that will teach me to smile, a story that will make me forget my hunger. A story that is filled with the moonlight, one of truth and the rays of hope. A story which is not often told or repeated. Ma, tell me a story that is real, a story that gives me hope. Ma.
No. Nah.